Hello everyone, welcome to Talk Here with us last the favorite health program on television. Reaching you from Niger's capital city, Abuja. My name is Dr. Lars Eze. Yes, it's October uh, 2022, and October globally is usually used to create awareness around breast cancer. So it's also known as Breast Cancer Awareness Month. But it's not just for breast cancer. In Nigeria, uh, this October, uh, earlier today, the Independent National Electoral Commission um, you know, released the list of candidates of governorship and state houses of assembly uh, election, the final list. Uh, of course, uh, you know, though this is not uh, purely a political program, but uh, health is something we want to be top of the agenda in, in, in the 2023 elections, especially at the subnational level, but also for citizens. Um, we look at, we'll be looking today at the rights of citizens as provided by the National Health Act 2014, and also the Patient Bill of Rights, which was launched on 31st July 2018 uh, by the Federal Minister of Health and the Federal Competitive and Consumer Protection Commission. You know, so not many know about this. We've discussed about it on this program before, but we can't stop creating this awareness because for us to have the best quality of healthcare delivery in Nigeria or anywhere in the world, patients must insist that their rights must be protected. And of course, health, health workers have rights too, but most times it's patients' rights that is being trampled upon. I have a, a seasoned uh, public health expert, uh, public servant uh, in the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency who retired uh, a number of years ago, but held very sensitive positions that is involved in primary health care systems development and of course monitoring and planning policy and all have you. So I know you can't wait to meet him, but that will be after this break. Do stay with us. Health Agenda 2023. The Nigerian health system is becoming weaker with the mass exodus of medical doctors, nurses, and other skilled health workers out of the country. In February and March 2023, Nigerians will go to the polls to elect the next president and state governors, respectively. This provides an opportunity for the election of leaders who will help to strengthen the health sector and reposition it to deliver quality healthcare services at all levels. We present to you Health Agenda 2023, an interview segment on this program for presidential and governorship candidates to discuss their health agenda before the electorates. For sponsorship and participation, reach out through any of the contact details displayed on your screen. Welcome back to Talk Here with us last your favorite health program on television. Here's my guest in the studio who is here to discuss patients' bill of rights and of course ways patients could seek redress should their rights be trampled upon is Dr. Abdullahi Mohammed. You're welcome to the program. It's a pleasure, Dr. Lars. Thank you, Good sir. Evening, Dr. Mohammed is uh, the founder and chief executive officer of Initiative for Health Accountability and Transparency in operating here in Abuja. And also he was director uh, primary health development, uh, primary health systems, systems development. development. Uh, as well as the uh, Department of Planning, Research and, uh, and Statistics at the National Primary Healthcare Development Agency here in Nigeria. I retired some years ago, but with rich experience in monitoring, evaluating, planning, and of course, strengthening primary health systems in the country. So um, this topic is one I know you've dedicated your time sure. working on, especially since after your retirement, uh, focusing on, at the policy level, uh, healthcare professional level, managers level, and all of that. What inspired you to getting into this business of ensuring that patients' rights are respected as service delivery points? Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Lars. In service, I worked more at the policy level, but I saw that uh, as far as the policy level was concerned, not much was happening on accountability in the health system. Mm. So I thought that, well, even before I retire, when I exit, I want to dedicate time to look at issues around accountability in the health system. 
And when you talk about accountability in the health system, there are many dimensions. Even mm. though everybody is talking about financial accountability, financial mm. accountability. There is political accountability, there is performance accountability, but not much is happening as far as professional accountability is concerned. Right. When you talk of professional accountability in the health system, you are looking at the providers. And, and by providers, you mean the doctors, yes. nurses? Three, when you talk of therapy. providers, you're looking at, first of all, individual providers. Okay. Doctors, nurses, technicians. And all. The second group is the institutions, the providing institutions. Okay. Because when you're talking about liability, liability can be on individual professional, okay. and liability can be on the... Institution. But beyond that, okay. support staff in the institutions too are very important because right. they play supportive role and they be, can be found and wanting. And who are the support staff? Well, <laughs> if, if, if people working in the finance, in admin. Okay, the accountants. They are, yes, the hospital, all of them. All of them they work yeah. in the hospital environment and they support. Right. Okay, that, that, that sounds good. So the individual health worker yes. is required to be accountable. Yeah. The institution Shem. like the hospital or the clinic has to be accountable you know, as and well as those staff. who are in, within yes. the admin system Shem. because what they do or they don't do one way or the other Thank service you delivery yes. okay good to know this uh, broad category so the national health act did well in yes you know in highlighting the key areas the key that areas. has to do with responsibilities and rights right. of patients and also of the providers too great so, and uh, the Federal Competitive yes. and Consumer Protection the former Commission, CPC. Uh, yes, former Consumer Protection, Protection Council, <laughs> yes. went to town to list them. Yeah, and, the and worked together with the Federal, federal Minister of Health to initiate the first document that so outlines the patient's rights. Right. We call it Nigerian Patient Bill, Bill of, of Rights. rights. Yes. So, uh, please take us through those, uh, you know, right. There are so many of them. Yes, there are. Uh, you know, you're, you had a very comprehensive listing, but yes. as much as our time could take, could you highlight those key ones right. that anyone watching this program should we'll take do. note of? I think, first of all, we need to know, if you talk about patients' rights, that mm -hmm. rights, what are you re really looking at? Mm. And those are entitlements. Okay. There are no privileges. They are Something they are that just must entitled. be, that should be. Yes, they are owned okay. to the provider, okay. I mean to the patient. patient. And now then the question will arise, if we continue to talk of a patient, who is a patient? Mm. A patient is that person who has presented his or herself mm. to a professional for evaluation or for treatment. Okay. So many at times it's not, well, within the medical context, because you can see somebody moves to spri uh, spiritual houses, moves to churches. As far as the real definition of the patient is concerned, mm. we don't reckon with that. We're looking at those who present themselves to medical professionals or to professional institutions. Okay. So, and they have rights. And these rights are very essential and they are key. Okay, because, what are those rights? Yes. The, first of all, the rights can be within the context of social, it can be cultural, mm -hmm. it can be ethical, okay. it can be professional. Okay. But the first thing we look at when we talk about patients' rights, when you look at the bill, the first thing that comes is the, the right to access to information. Access to information. information. Very key. We don't, every aspect of treatment of a patient, mm. the patient is entitled to information on it. The diagnosis, including even the prognosis. Okay. So by that you mean the healthcare provider at every level, level must be explaining to the patient. Yes, in the language, in the, language the, the patient, patient understands. What if the healthcare worker can't speak the well, language? Well, that's always, you understands. always find out that somebody is there to interpret. To, interpret. to okay. avoid, I mean, to meet that particular essential component of the rights of the patients. Okay. Yes. Th and that's really key because <laughs> I recall that uh, in the course of my clinical care sometimes, yes. You may not be able to Speak communicate, language, so you get someone you, somebody, you talk to thank you very much. who we explain it to the language the patient. Yeah. That's really key. But I don't, I don't think we are doing so well in that regard because patients usually complain that health workers, even when they ask them questions, yes. don't like sharing information. Sometimes <laughs> they even react angrily yes, towards yes. the patient. I wouldn't. Well, with the time wouldn't allow us mm. because everywhere globally, just not in Nigeria alone, mm. there is what we call healthcare compassion crisis. Okay. That compassion, that emotional connection, mm. and the willingness to help. And most of the times, the health workers are suffering from burnout. 
Okay. They have seen 100 patients, 50 patients mm. in a day. They hardly so have time. short time to yes. attend to. There are times before you even write the patient, please, I've mm. seen you go. So that, those are some of the issues. Factors so yes, that the are factors. So we, I mean, yeah. for a provider to strictly uh, they uphold the rights in a context where it's overburdened is not easy. Mm. But the patient demands it. And each time also, the bill says that the patient, the provider must also ensure he confirms that patients understands. Okay. And we don't about doctors alone, even in the pharmacy. When mm -hmm. you prescribe, you have given two to one. Or do you understand what I said? So those right. are key issues on the first, what is what, what is always come out in terms of right to information. Mm -hmm. And they also have right to records. Patient has right, he can tell you, I want my record. Which type of records? Medical records. Okay. Medical records. He does not need to go to court to request that I need medical record. It's so, his record. So how could the patient get it? You know, some use electronic records, yes. which uh, could easily print out yes. part of it. But most hospitals in Nigeria use the paper method. So you need to apply for it. And there is also encumbrances there. Mm. People will ask to apply. You come today, come tomorrow. Some mm. people, they want to move forward. They is want this to them go. asking for doctor's report? Sure. sure. Okay. So the medical report is very key. They are entitled to it. And at any time. Sometimes patients will need to go to a hospital, to, I mean to the courts, to request. Mm. It shouldn't be. A patient, they, 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 there is a bond between a patient and a provider. That record is non binding. Is, is belongs to the patient. Yes, so it's non binding. But we all request. understand that it's their right. That's mm. why I talked about their entitlements. Right. Yes. So that is on that. The other thing that is also very important when we talk about uh, patients' rights is that we must also ensure that patients have information he needs to take decision. Informed decision. Yes, to inform decision. Mm. And then we also talk about consent. Okay. Very key. Everything, not just about uh, medical experimental consent, mm. because sometimes it's uh, that, uh, oh, we want to do an experiment, we want to give you drugs. But, 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 but sometimes a patient expects the healthcare provider to make decisions for them. They will tell you, doctor, advise me, what should I do? <laughs> well, because the, the trust is there. And because, so you know, there's asymmetry. It it's okay, but let advise. the patient be in the picture. Because okay. of this asymmetry between you as a provider and the patient, mm. you have all the information. So with sincerity, you must give that without any motive or profit because we are looking at mm. the business model of healthcare today. Sometimes decisions are taken not or because the not patient needs okay. that. So we need to, mm. patients also need to do that. And the patients have right, I mean, access to quality healthcare. Mm. Access to quality health care. Mm. That, that one, if we begin to talk about uh, Very it, important. So what it a means a is that you are zone. required to uphold all the professional standards, mm. professional ethics, and code of conduct. But what if, uh, because most times yes. when healthcare workers go on strike, yes. the issues they list out as reasons yes. are things that deal with the quality of care. Yes. Some of which are beyond no the then. control of the healthcare provider. Yes, so yes. who do you hold liable and, uh, and one other if thing. the hospital management or the government doesn't provide some of those basic it's, things it's to the health worker? So who do you hold liable? It's, it's, it's really situation? very complex. But even the disruption, part of, if you look at the bill, the mm. bill also, I mean, the bill of rights says that in the case of disruption, mm. a doctor must find alternative with most arrangement because we are always emphasizing continuity of treatment. Right. Before the day of the, of the strike, comes, discuss with the patients. We're going to be away for one month, two weeks. Where do you want to go? And you have to prepare that, all the that, necessary. That don't usually happen. People don't know because people don't Th have There's their something rights. that happened recently at OAU teaching, or Bafemi Aolo University teaching us relief. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, a medical doctor and a nurse had misunderstanding yeah. over management who Issues. takes away yeah. refuse yeah. or deaths, yeah. you know, within yeah. the yeah. distance. You know, and because of that, just the next day, resident doctors declared one in strike. We were away for three days. After that, the week after, the nurses, nurses. and um, their other allied health workers they also went, also on, strike. went on their own working, uh, one in strike because they felt the way the hospital management yes. was handling the matter was, was biased. biased. So in this situation, patients were suffering for two professionals that, that have misunderstanding. Uh, yes, it's the grass went to elephants fight. 
is the grasses that suffer. And so this is situation, a manifestation. What, what could happen? Because it's a dysfunctional, dysfunctionality in the health system. Mm. And let me tell you, we wouldn't have time to talk about the grievances management. If uh, we talk I, about... I, I think we, we talk about that in the second uh, segment. Because that's, if that's we are doing... What I'm saying that is that mm. if we have that, yeah. a mechanism for grievances resolution, an effective mechanism mm. for grievances resolution is a right of the patient. It's in the patient's bill of rights. Okay. So if that is there and is working, right. Are you getting me? And there is what well, these days people are talking about legal empowerment for patients so that patients can seek redress for mismanagement. That, that, that would be an interesting part. But let's take uh, this break. Yes. Uh, when we return, I, I would like Thank us you. to talk a bit around that. I know the time wouldn't, yeah. wouldn't be enough, but our viewers really need to know. Uh, I've, we've been discussing patient bill of rights and uh, how primary health care and healthcare system should meet the needs uh, of the patient. And Dr. Abdullahi Mohammed, who is an expert in this, uh, has been sharing expert opinion. Let's take this break and we'll be back. Health Agenda 2023. The Nigerian health system is becoming weaker with the mass exodus of medical doctors, nurses, and other skilled health workers out of the country. In February and March 2023, Nigerians will go to the polls to elect the next president and state governors, respectively. This provides an opportunity for the election of leaders who will help to strengthen the health sector and reposition it to deliver quality healthcare services at all levels. We present to you Health Agenda 2023, an interview segment on this program for presidential and governorship candidates to discuss their health agenda before the electorates. For sponsorship and participation, reach out through any of the contact details displayed on your screen. Welcome back to Tokyo with Dr. Lazio of Favorite Health Program on television. Yes, we're discussing patients' bill of rights and uh, uh, grievance resolution mechanism. And with me is the founder of Initiative for uh, health, accountability health accountability and, and transparency. transparency. I don't know what's happened <laughs> to me today. So, <laughs> Dr. Abdullah Mohammed. Uh, so, before the break, um, we talked about the grievance resolution. We've not exhausted the yes. rights, uh, but we are going to project it, you know, of course, for you to see a bit more of it. We'll take a breather and project more of those rights. You'll see more of it. I want us to go into the grievance resolution mechanism now. Yes. People who have different grievances, and a lot of times they're like, we don't know who to talk to. Yes. We don't know the channel. Yeah. And there was Savicon that was established it's still working at some well. point. Yeah. Uh, there were uh, awareness around that period it was established, yeah. but not many persons, they just see signs of Savicon, Savicon. Yes. Not many persons know how to okay. go about this. Yeah. Could yeah. you break it down? Perhaps <coughs> using a case scenario. Yeah. Where in Abuja, if someone goes to national hospital, Yes. or go to Wuse General Hospital, or go to uh, Kwali Health Center, and feels not happy with the way it's being treated. What steps should the person take? Yes, I think what is most important is that there will always be grievances when there is right, mm. because somebody's right will be stumbled on. And yes. there must be a mechanism for grievances management. Mm -hmm. And what is most important, first and foremost, is that health facilities at all levels should have notification in the premises. At highly visible areas, we call the antenata, card area, um, pharmacy, they should have notification. Patients rise here, mm -hmm. and these are what it is. Okay. In every corner. At the same time, every facility should have notification of mechanisms. If you have complaints, call this number or reach it. That is the first point. Mm. So I think if we want to make the process effective, the starting point is that notification. That notice. Yes. And Unfortunately, talk, talk that notification Niger, is not there. Talk here, Niger, we actually printed over 5,000 copies of patient bill of rights yes. and the large ones that health facilities could put Put's. up. Of course, that's yes. not enough, but yes. that's just our own contribution. Yes. So to, notification uh, is not this. about NGOs coming in. I think the CPC, I'm sorry, the FCCPC now, mm. I think they need to do more in that light. Make it compulsory 
for all facilities. I right. enforce it. Even if they can use cardboard paper, no, they can do small printing. They can do flyers, and they, I also no. told uh, NHIA, NHIS. Now they are doing much already. That's facilities, facilities that are accredited should have that, and mm. many of them are having me. Okay. So that the point, the starting point, is that patients should know I have rights, right. and this is my right. And patients should also know that yes, if I have any complaint. These are the mechanisms. That is the easiest. That is the starting point. Because okay. when you're looking at patient, I mean grievances resolution, we have direct channel, okay, and indirect channel, which is the level of escalation. Mm. The direct channel is at the facility, and okay. that is the easiest place. So it must be there. If you have complaint, call this number. Okay. In many hospitals, they have what they call patients uh, advocate. And there is a staff mm. of the hospital, but any complaint patients have must be there. Okay. And what we preach also is that the service providers at each level should ask patients, do you have complaint? Okay. If you have complaint, please go and make your complaint there. And it appears some also do have suggestion box. They have suggestion box. So the mechanisms these days, you put it, they have suggestion boxes, they have SMS platforms, they have WhatsApp platform, they have mm. Telegram platforms, there are emails there you can reach. But let's know that beyond the direct uh, channel, which is at a facility level, there are other channels, particularly okay. with respect to regulators. You All have right. the right can, to can reach the Council. Can we quickly mention them in like 30 seconds? Yes. The, the, the yes. indirect channel. Well, the those indirect channels, that can, those problems cannot be solved at the facility level. Okay. Some can be of criminal cases, you need to go to police. It's mm. also within the context of service delivery. Some have to do with professional issues. You should be able to go to nursing and medical council or okay. uh, Nigeria Medical uh, laboratory, laboratory. All of council. them, those are indirect channels. Okay. But there are also Savicom. Some of you, you can also go to the Federal Protection uh, Commission and make okay. your complaints. I want All to right. thank you so much, <laughs> Dr. Lai. I, I really Time is short. Yes, it I is. hope we look I forward to more opportunity they, to they, talk they, more. Definitely, we will we, we'll do that. I really want to thank you. Yes. Uh, please, we we'll project some slides uh, for you to read up some of this information. Uh, we really have to uh, leave now. Uh, I really thank you for thank you making so our much, time Dr. to talk Dr. about yes, this. Please definitely talk we'll more, please, as part we'll of your program. There can be no quality improvement mm. without patients' rights and grievances resolution. Well patients' said. experience determines whether there's. You could have the best That's fine. physicians, you can have <laughs> the best equipment. If the patient's right. experience is not positive, you can move. Thank you very much, Dr. Th thank Lai. you. you it's please, a pleasure. Please wait. Okay. Wait. So th th thank you very much. Yes, that's, that's much we can take uh, today uh, on talking with Dr. Lars. And like he's, my guest said, we'll keep using every avenue, online channels, uh, to make this information available. Know your rights and take steps to enforce them. See you same station, same time next week. Bye for now.